Hello, and welcome to another edition of StatHead Tutorials. StatHead is a service created by the people behind websites like Baseball Reference and Basketball Reference that gives you the power to unlock our vast databases of sports statistics in order to perform complicated research in a matter of seconds. The tools that comprise StatHead are already used by front offices, broadcasters, journalists, sabermetricians, gamblers, and more. And now we want to give this same power to you. This episode is about the Event Finder. The Event Finder is somewhat different from the other baseball reference StatHead tools that we've gone over. Rather than researching seasons or games, the Event Finder goes into the play-by-play -play data, displaying individual plays from baseball history. It's a little trickier to get used to than the other tools, but it's incredibly powerful. So let's dig in. Baseball Reference contains complete play-by-play -play data all the way back to 1973 mostly complete play-by-play -play to 1950, and some play-by-play -play all the way back to 1918. Uh, what does that mean? Well, our play-by-play -play data is a full summary of every single play from a given baseball game. That's every hit, every strikeout, and every dinger. Box scores give you a decent amount of information about how a game played out. If you've read the newspaper or looked up online box scores, you know that you can learn who got a hit, who got an RBI, how many times someone struck out, but with play-by-play, -play, you can tell how many people were on base when a player struck out, or how many outs there were in the inning when he hit a home run. As we discussed in the split finder video, you can use this data to create situational stat lines, um, but you can also just use this data to look through it and see interesting plays on their own. That's where the event finder comes in. The event finder allows you to search through every single line of play-by-play -play data in the baseball reference database. To use it, First, you'll want to decide whether you want to research from the hitter's perspective or the pitcher's perspective, and then select your tool from the StatHead main menu. Once inside, select the years, the team, and the play type, and then run the search. In this example, I'll look up all the Dodgers home runs from 2019. Once you've run the search, scroll down and you'll see a list of every single play that meets the search criteria. So in this case, this is every single home run hit by a Dodgers player in 2019. By default, these plays are sorted by date, but you can also resort the table by any of the columns. There are some obvious ones here, like inning and runners on base, uh, but I will go over easier ways to filter by things like that in a bit. What I want to point out at this point are the last three column options, WPA, RE24, and LI. WPA stands for win probability added, and all that means is it's the change in your win team's win probability by the outcome of the given play. Um, so if you sort by this column, what you'll be seeing are the most important plays in terms of swinging a team's odds of winning. If you think about a given play uh, and score situation, your team might have a 50-50 shot of winning, 75-25, 99%, 1%. Um, and then after the play, that win probability changes based on what you did in the play. Um, so again, if you sort by this column, you can see the most important plays in terms of swinging a team's odds of winning. In this example, uh, we can see that Jock Peterson hit a two-run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning with the Dodgers down by a run. He instantly turned a game that they were about to lose into a win. That was the biggest WPA shift uh, by in a single play for any of these Dodgers home runs. But... That's just in 2019. The WPA could have been even higher depending on the score and the number of outs and things like that. Um, so that's WPA. The second column is RE24, which measures how many runs a hitter added above the average for that given game situation, the number of runners on base, outs, that sort of thing. Lastly, there's LI, which stands for Leverage Index. And that's an attempt to quantify how much pressure there was in the situation. So while Jock Peterson's walk-off home run was our leader for WPA, it doesn't lead in leverage index. And the reason for that is that there were zero outs and one runner on. So while it was an extremely high pressure moment, even if he had hit into a double play, that wouldn't have been the end of the game. The Dodgers would have still been down by a run and could have tied it with a solo home run uh, with two outs. Instead, our leader here is Matt Beatty's three-run homer. That was the highest leverage dinger of the Dodgers 2019 season because it came with one out in the ninth with two runners on and the team behind. It could have ended the, it could have ended the game with a loss or it could have given the Dodgers a lead. 
keep in mind that once again, this is just Dodgers home runs in 2019. So there could have been plays that were even higher leverage if there were, if it were the bottom of the ninth inning, if there were two outs, that sort of thing. Keep in mind that these will only sort within the table and each table only has 300 rows. We went over this in the game finder video as well. If you run a query for something with more matching plays than 300, so if I had searched for Dodgers walks instead of home runs, I would need to go to the other pages of the search to make sure I wasn't missing anything when I was resorting the table. Above the table, there's a full stat line for all the plays that match the search. Keep that in mind as we go deeper into this video. It probably doesn't seem super useful here when we're talking about just a list of home runs, but with some of the other more in-depth searches that you can do, having this option there is going to come in handy. Uh, above the stat line, there's a large list of filters. This will allow you to narrow the search parameters even further. So you can filter these plays by month, handedness, home or away, opponent, hitter, pitcher, ballpark, batted ball type, batted ball location, the fielder, the number of pitches, the count, the number of outs, defensive position of the hitter, uh, the base situation, leverage index, inning, spot in the batting order, and score. There are also filters on top of this table that allow you to look for special play types. You can look for leadoff and game ending plays, game tying or go ahead plays, and of course, walk offs. In addition, this summary will show you how many plays in your query match each filter. The real power of the event finder comes when you put these things together. So let's put together a few example searches. Here's one, you can see every grand slam from behind in the count in 2019. Or how about every inside the park grand slam since 1990? Or how about every line drive in nationals park history? As you can see, there are over 12,000 plays in that last query, and the number can get much, much, much higher. However, the larger the search, the more difficult it is to run, and the higher likelihood that the site will time out before you can complete it. To avoid this, my recommendation is to narrow the range of years for your search, at least at first, uh, and run a smaller set than you might be looking for. This will display fewer plays, the search will run cleaner, and then you can run the query in batches or expand it if you need to see more results. In addition to our regular season play-by-play, -play, we have complete play-by-play -play for every postseason game and all-star game. There are dedicated event finders for both of those game types that work exactly the same way as the regular event find. Postseason one even has special options that allow you to look up plays by series type, game number in the series, and even options like winner takes, takes all games. So you can see every walk off in a winner takes all game seven or things like that. All right, that wraps up our video on the event finder. This stat head tool gives you the power to look up unique and interesting plays from over 100 years of baseball history. For more ways to get the most out of stat head, check out our other tutorial videos. If you have questions, please email us or hit us up on social media. Thanks and we'll see you again soon.